Hey, I'm Kier, and this is that vlog thing that I'm doing. Today, let's talk about werewolves. Now, werewolves go way back, uh, mythologically speaking. People being able to transform into animals of various types, that's a very uh, classic uh, idea in, in a lot of nature religions, and a lot of shamanic traditions. Once upon a time, was intertwined more than a little bit with the vampire mythology. Uh, vampires, in some of the old stories, would often turn themselves into wolves and ravage people, uh, harass livestock and, and all sorts of other uh, wonderful uh, things. Uh, it wasn't until comparatively recently, the last uh, couple hundred years, uh, when there was, or less than that, actually, uh, when there was a divergence between vampires and werewolves in any really meaningful way. Uh, and it has grown into a very meaningful division, as werewolves and vampires are now, more often than not, portrayed as mortal enemies. Uh, which is interesting uh, in perspective of what the two different uh, monster types stand for. Now, werewolves, for anyone who's been living under a rock their entire lives and doesn't know, are people who, for one reason or another, during the full moon, turn into uh, either giant wolves or human-wolf hybrid type creatures with claws and snouts and teeth, uh, and, and then go and usually kill people. Usually people they know. Uh, and then when they wake up the next day, they have no full memory of what happened, but their clothes are torn, there may be blood everywhere around them, uh, and then they find out that someone in the vicinity of where they were has been shredded to bits. The main thing at the core of the horror of being a werewolf is that total and complete loss of control. Werewolves in general, in horror, werewolves typically cannot control when they change, and they can't control what they do when they have transformed into their wolf or wolfman form. That's something that a lot of people get concerned with, that losing control. Now the flip side of that is that need a lot of people feel to always be in control. And that's uh, its own bit of, uh, bit of psychology that, that comes into play because Werewolves may be an escapist fantasy for some people. That ability, or that necessity, to give up control and to not be concerned about everything that we do. Uh, that, that can be a very liberating idea for some people, but terrifying at the same time because of that fear about what happens if we're not in complete control all the time. I may do something that hurts someone. I may not be happy with what I do or what I discover about myself. But the simple fact of human nature is we've all got some sort of bestial nature within us. We all have the capacity for violence and destruction. And that's what's let out in the werewolf fiction. When the person changes during that full moon, they become all of that pent-up rage and anger and animalistic desire. And that can often translate into a uh, big mess if it doesn't have uh, the human intellect and compassion there to balance it out, to direct that animalistic passion, those drives. And it's that destruction that we're all a little bit afraid of. The, our ability to cause that sort of destruction is what a, 
is at the core of the werewolf uh, myths and the werewolf horror. Now, the other thing that goes on in werewolf stories is often the at least one werewolf in the story trying to be a good guy. He is trying to cure himself of this curse, trying to make it so that people can be safe around him, that he doesn't have to lock himself up away from everyone else that one or three days a month when he's going to change and become this animal, this beast. And very often, the hero wolfman is not successful in finding a solution for his problem that doesn't end up with him being dead. Now, in some more modern uh, werewolf fiction, we've seen a, a rise in the stories of werewolves who can control their change, who do retain human intellect and self-control when they are in their bestial forms. That's an interesting evolution of the mythology, and it changes the stories from being horror to being more fantasy and adventure than anything else. Because now you basically have people with superpowers who can use all of that pent up rage and that base animal nature to do good. And that's an important message that we've come to realize in our collective subconscious is that these things aren't inherently bad. These drives deep within us aren't really a problem if we accept them, if we work with the idea that they are legitimately part of us and can serve the world in positive ways. And that's something that wasn't always a part of the werewolf horror, uh, but it's grown into it. That's not to say there's not still a bunch of stories out there where werewolves are just vicious beasts that need to be taken down by silver bullets. Because werewolves are the least vulnerable uh, creatures in the horror mythos. You can effectively uh, drop a nuclear bomb on a werewolf, and chances are it will come back be very annoyed with you, and hunt you down. Now, you drop a nuclear bomb on a vampire, hey, that's the same as setting him on fire, decapitating him, and scattering the ashes. That's a pretty effective way of getting rid of vampires. And, you know, the rest of the city they're in. Werewolves would shrug that off and still come after you. And that's kind of a testament to that deep primal nature that the werewolf represents. The fact that you can't destroy the werewolf without also destroying the person that becomes the werewolf. They are so deeply intertwined. And that's something that uh, our urbanized, civilized culture doesn't really know how to deal with. We have trouble very often balancing those base needs with our intellectual needs. We think ourselves so far apart from nature that being forcibly thrust into nature is a terrifying concept. And that's what happens with werewolves. You get thrust into your most basic nature. And it goes poorly because you have no control over it. Because your normal concept of yourself is so far away from whatever is in your core, that you can't have both of them existing at the same time. Except in that heroic werewolf fiction that has come up over the last few decades, which is, again, an interesting turn of events. So that's werewolves. If you have anything to say about werewolves, uh, or my ideas about werewolves, uh, hit me up in the comments below. If you like what you saw here, uh, hit the like button. Uh, give me a thumbs up down there. Uh, 
Also, subscribe uh, so you get notified of new videos that show up. Right now they're showing up every day, so it's easy to remember. But if you get an email notification, you'll be even more sure. And uh, share this video if you think someone else has an opinion about uh, what I'm talking about and if you think they'd be interested in any of this. That's it for today. I'm Kier, and I guess I'll see you tomorrow.